Hi, and welcome back to Cut the Craggle. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the third in this wave of custom LEGO Doctor Who sets based on the Moffat era. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my other custom LEGO Doctor Who videos celebrating the show's 60th anniversary. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Alright, let's jump right into it. The third set in this wave is... The Crimson Horror, Trouble at Mill. In 19th century Yorkshire, Solarian Madame Vastra, her human wife Jenny, and Sontaran butler Strax are hired to investigate the death of a man whose body was found with bright red skin. Discovering the dead man's retina has retained the image of the last thing he saw before he died, Madame Vastra and Jenny are shocked to see a picture of their good friend, the Doctor. They learn that supposed moral crusader and chemist, Mrs. Giddyflower, is using a prehistoric venom to preserve the people she's recruiting for her idyllic model village, Sweetville. Mrs. Giddyflower plans to launch a rocket that will cover the world in a lethal dose of the red poison, wiping away the rest of humanity so that her perfect community can repopulate the Earth. Written by frequent Doctor Who contributor Mark Gatiss, this saw the return of the Paternoster Gang. First appearing in the Series 6 episode, A Good Man Goes to War, the trio went on to become recurring characters in Doctor Who between 2011 and 2014, and even featured in their own spin-off series of audio adventures. This set is inspired by a couple of different scenes from the episode. The first is when Jenny rescues the petrified Doctor and he leads her to a mysterious rinsing chamber. This build is a cutaway of the red brick corridor where the rinsing chamber is located in the Sweetville Mill. There's a couple of jumper plates on the floor where you can pose your minifigs, but the main play feature is the rinsing chamber itself. You can see there's a brand new printed tile for the vented window on the metal door, and if you open it up, there's a place to stand your minifig of the Crimson Doctor. Then you just close the door again, turn this knob at the top, and when you open it again, the Doctor has been miraculously restored. Around the back, you can easily access the other side of the turntable, so you can place your second figure for the transformation play feature. But there's also this narrow space where you can have the petrified Doctor in prison before Jenny rescues him. The second part of the set is based around the climax of the episode, where the Doctor and his friends desperately try to stop Mrs. Giddyflower from launching her deadly rocket. Alongside the rocket is this service tower. The stairs and platforms are all open studded so you can easily pose your minifigures. And I've deliberately given the rocket this quite blocky structure to give it more of the look of something constructed during the Industrial Revolution. It's a simple enough assembly, but I think it captures that retro-futuristic, almost steampunk feel of the rocket from the show. And you can even remove one of these side panels to access the poison payload inside. This set comes with six minifigures, and first up we have the 11th Doctor. This is a brand new variant of the Doctor, sporting some period-appropriate threads. He wears a brown tweed three-piece suit, and like with his iconic tweed jacket, I didn't think the pattern would translate well as a print. So I opted to use the fairly new medium brown colour as the base, and I think it represents the costume really well. And to complete the look, he also has this brand new combined hair and bowler hat piece. Next up, we have Clara Oswald. Like the Doctor, she's in period costume, but this is actually based on the dress Mrs. Giddyflower puts her in for display after using the crimson poison to preserve her like a mannequin. As much as I preferred the practicality of poseable legs, for this style of Victorian dress, I had to go with a curved slope piece for her bottom half. She also uses the Naomi hairpiece in reddish brown, and the same headpiece as my previous Clara minifigure from the Doctor Who Moffat CMF series. Up next, we have the mysterious Monster. This, of course, is actually the second minifig in this set of the 11th Doctor. After being captured, the preservation process didn't work on the Doctor due to his Time Lord biology, but it also wasn't enough to kill him. 
Rigid to the point where he could barely move and was unable to speak, the Doctor was hidden away by Gillyflower's daughter Ada, who affectionately named him her special monster. This version of the Doctor has bright red flesh, littered in these nasty looking wounds. His face is all but fixed in this open mouthed but silent scream, and as well as a new printed torso for his long johns, he does also have a slightly different alternate expression, with him looking even sorrier for himself, and he comes with a set of handcuffs for when he's chained up. Then it's Madame Vastra. While there's not been any official physical Silurian Lego minifigures, they did pop up as NPCs in the Doctor Who adventure world in Lego Dimensions. My minifigure of Madame Vastra uses a brand new custom piece for the top of her head, inspired by the one seen in the video game. I imagine this custom piece would be glued onto the minifigure head, similar to the flames on the head of the Hades minifigure from the Disney CMF series. Because of this, she only has one face print, so I went for something pretty neutral that you could use in different scenarios. Plus, it fits with Fastra's more stoic personality. Like Clara, I've opted to use the curved slope dress piece for her mahoosive purple Victorian dress, and she comes with a katana piece in flat silver for an accessory. Following close on her high heels is Vastra's human wife and housemaid, Jenny. This version of Jenny is based on her appearance after she sheds the bulky, cumbersome period garb to reveal a tight leather catsuit. The costume was actually a homage to guest star Dame Diana Rigg, who became famous in the 60s for playing the sexy super spy Emma Peel in The Avengers. No, not that one. As well as a brand new printed torso, she also has a brand new double-sided headpiece, with this happy, open-mouthed look of surprise on one side, and this much fiercer snarl with bare teeth on the other, as if she's just about to judo-throw some of Sweetville's supermodels to the ground. And finally, we have Mrs. Gillyflower. Played by the late Dame Diana Rigg herself, Mrs. Gillyflower may look like a sweet old lady at first, but she is about as wicked as Doctor Who villains come, willing to sacrifice even her own daughter in order to get what she wants. Just like Clara and Madame Vastra, Mrs. Gillyflower also uses the curved slope dress piece, and at this point, I'm gonna stop saying that I prefer legs over them, because let's face it, after this set, I don't have a leg to stand on. Dressed as though she were on her way to a funeral, she also has a brand new combined veil and hair piece. She has a double sided headpiece with two face prints. The first is this rather unnerving smile, while the second has a very angry open mouth snarl. And of course, for an accessory, she comes with a revolver gun piece. So there you have my custom Lego Doctor Who The Crimson Horror Trouble at Mill set. I imagine this set will be priced around $44.99. That might seem a bit much for 333 pieces, but some of those are larger panel pieces, and it does come with six brand new minifigures. Truth be told, ideally, I would have liked to have added a couple more minifigs. I fully expect to see complaints that Strax hasn't been included, and I also would have liked to have included Mrs. Gillyflower's daughter, Ada. But when designing these sets, I try to balance my own wish fulfillment with what I think LEGO realistically would include, and I just can't see them stretching beyond six minifigs for a set of this size. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this set turned out. I'm really pleased with the transformation play feature, but as with most of my custom sets, the highlight is definitely the minifigures. It is a shame that this set doesn't include the complete Paternoster gang, but then again, if you had my Sontarans vs Unit set, you could just use the Commander Scarmony fig. Although saying that, it would have been very cool to have Strax in his butler tuxedo. Let me know what you think of my custom LEGO Doctor Who The Crimson Horror Trouble at Mill set in the comments down below. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications, and if you've done all that, well, you might as well give the video a cheeky thumbs up as well. I'll see you next time. Laters!